up YouTube, that's it here and today I'm super excited to be bringing you guys a brand new video. This time we're going to be talking about how you can build the best possible VGC team. A couple days ago I made a really cool video talking about how to build the best singles team. I showed off every single trick in the book, all the tips, tutorial, guides, everything you need to know to build the best possible singles team and I said a lot of those tips and tricks can be applied to VGC as well. A lot of people said they wanted to see a VGC version, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be taking a look at how I would personally build the best VGC team, and I'm actually gonna do it, and I'm gonna try to make it as similar to the singles team that we made the other day, just to show that any team can really be made for any format, even ones that use very similar Pokemon, and that it'll it'll really do a good job of highlighting the differences in the two formats as well. Like uh, For those of you guys that are curious, we used a team the other day, the one that we ended up making was this one. We ended up making a team around Charizard G-Max with Gastrodon, Alolan Ninetales, Alolan Sandslash, Virizion, and Lycanroc. And I want to make a team that has almost all of those same Pokemon, but just used in such a different way to showcase the difference between the two formats. But even though we're showcasing differences, we're going to show that in reality, since we are still using a lot of the same Pokemon, uh, you know, things don't really change that much. So it's all in how you play the teams. I want I want that to, you know, be driven in through the use of this video. But yeah, I, re I remember talking a lot yesterday, uh, or whenever I recorded the video, about the, I guess, the things that you need to do. The tips and tricks, the how to build the best team, right? That's the that's the hard part, is like, what do you actually need to do? A lot of people always ask me, like, that's a, I'm always confused as where to start with these things. I don't know how to start. I don't know how to pick Pokemon. I don't know how to make cores. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So I would say the first place to actually start is to answer the question of the day. Obviously, answer the question of the day, and that is, are you more of a fan of singles or doubles? And I want you guys to give me a concrete reason as to why you like one format more than the other. Personally, I like singles. I've always liked singles. I think forcing and pinning your opponents is really, really cool. And especially right now, with VGC tournaments not having any regionals, singles is just a lot more fun for me. So that's why I like singles more than doubles. But, you know, I'm definitely interested in hearing all of your reasons. And uh, if you guys want to see more of a certain type of content, Try and win me over in the comments below. Maybe it'll work. But uh, like I was talking about, the number one thing you want to be working on is getting usage stats. So one way you can do that is by going to Pokemon Home. So by going to Pokemon Home and pulling up the top 30 most used out of the same thing that we're going to be doing in this video in the video I made the other day. And these are the usage stats for VGC. So you can see they're completely different from the singles ones, uh, but they still feature a lot of the similar Pokemon just in different areas. Remember, Charizard was number four in singles, and uh, both Urshifus were in the top 10 in singles. Drakezold's still in the top 10, but uh, and so is Primarina. But we're going to see Talonflame be in the top 10 in doubles. Gale Wing's super good ability makes all of its flying type attacks have priority while it has full HP. So it's the best Tailwind setter in the format, which means, again, all of these Pokemon that are in the top 10 especially, those are the Pokemon that you're going to be fighting against more often than not in all these games. Uh, when you start getting into Master Ball, when you start actually getting into doubles, you can expect most teams to have three or more of the Pokemon that are in the top 10. Like a standard team that's in the top 10 would have like Talonflame, Primarina, Urshifu, maybe even a Dracozolt and a Clefairy. So you really got to respect those options. I would say every single common core from the top 10 uses at least two of these Pokemon. You got a Tailwind team, you're in Talonflame. You got a Trick Room team, you're probably running that Dusclops. Uh, or the Primarina, you have an aggressive team running an Urshifu, you need Redirection, you want Amoongus or Clefairy, uh, you want, uh, you know, Draco's and Lapras are two of the biggest Maximons in the format right now. So I would say respecting the top 10 and building a team that can deal with the top 10 is the number one tip you guys can actually be using to build your own teams. And like I said, if you don't know where to get this data, this data is on Pokemon Home. Just open up the uh, app on your phone if you don't have it. Maybe think about checking out our Discord. There's a link to that in the description of the video. You can just ask around. Some people will be able to help you out and get you these usage stats that you need to succeed. Again, when you click the usage stats on all these Pokemon, you can see each of the, these Pokemon's like most common items, most common partners, most common natures, everything, the things that most commonly they knock out versus the things that knock them out. It's super important to actually look at these things and, uh, you know, actually be able to soak up the information. So I would say take a look at the top 30, but even more than the top 30, really pay attention to the top 10. That's what we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, for most of the day, for most of this video really, is taking a look at the top 10 and building a team that can deal with the top 10. Uh, I haven't even really talked about what we're building yet, but remember, like I said, what we're going to really be trying to do 
is use a team that's very similar to the one that we're showing right here. I want to use a team that still uses a lot of those same Pokemon just to show you guys that you don't need to actually change up a lot of the things that I mentioned in the singles video. Like the singles video that I keep mentioning is going to be linked at the top of the description of this video. You need to see that. I go in so much more depth in that video and I just really want to show that all the tools that you use there can just be just as easily be applied to VGC. So what are we going to do? We're going to go back out into our team builder. We're going to go over here. And we're going to go make a VGC team. So like I said, the Pokemon that we're going to be building around for today is Charizard. I think Charizard's a really, really good Pokemon. And uh, again, let's look at what Charizard can do. Remember, the second tip is to build a team around a Pokemon. And it's a little bit harder to build a team around a Pokemon in Devils just because you can never get that one-on-one -on -one scenario. Let's say I want to build around Charizard. If Charizard always has to be fighting a 1v2, it's going to be a little bit hard. But yeah, we're going to be building mostly around Charizard today just because I think it's a really cool Pokemon. And I think it has I think it has the correct stats, the correct typing, and uh, a really good G-Max ability in being able to put that wildfire. So it actually brings a lot to the table. But let's talk about Charizard's matchups versus the top 10. The top 10 being Talonflame. Charizard versus Talonflame. I would say it's a win for Talonflame. It can go for a faster speed control. It doesn't have to rely on Airstream. And even if it does want to go for the Airstreams instead of the Tailwind to avoid a fake out, uh, it's still faster than Charizard. So that's good for Talonflame. Um, I would also say Talonflame like, is pretty much Charizard, but not having to be maxed to be able to bring a lot to the table. So I would say most people would bring Talonflames to fight Charizards, because I just think it's a good matchup for them. I do think the fact that Charizard gets Ancient Power is going to be something we work with a lot, so uh, they're going to have to watch out for that. But uh, yeah, Talonflame's really good versus Zard. Um, Primarina's amazing versus Zard. Uh, I, I like to think that Charizard's better than Urshifu, but we're, there are a lot of Scarf Urshifus. Urshifu gets Sucker Punch. Urshifu does bring a lot to the table. It does have the Flying Weakness. Uh, Urshifu's a good Pokemon. Amoongus. Charizard's great versus Amoongus. Uh, Arcanine. I would say Charizard's pretty decent versus Arcanine. It does outspeed it. Arcanine goes for Snarls, but if you can get into a really good situation, maybe you have like a Weather Up or something, you can hit the Arcanine with a really big Airstream or even like a Scorching Sands before you can go for the big Snarls and just do a lot of damage. Zard's good versus Arcanine. Uh, I would say Zard's good for Clefairy because you can, you don't technically need to max, you can always go for those heat waves. And putting Dots up against a Pokemon that uses an Eviolite, similar to Dust Cops, I guess I skipped the Dust Cops. Zard's good versus Dust Cops, the one shot against Dust Cops if you're using the right set. Um, you, if you have the Sun up and have like a Life Orb or whatever, you can one shot those things in the face. Uh, same thing against Clefairy. Dracozolt, we already talked about Dracozolt being good against Zard. And I would say that uh, Lapras, I like Zard versus Lapras, just because I think they have to go for a Geyser to be able to deal with their Zard. And if you can set the Sun, the Geyser's not doing as much. And if they're not setting up their Resonance with their Lapras, I feel they're not using Lapras correctly, and we're probably going to be fine. Yo, someone just followed the Twitch channel. Yo, you know, that's a that's a great segue. Guys, go follow the Twitch channel as well. There's a link to that in the description of this video. Also, while you guys are watching this video, think about leaving a like. We're always trying to get every single video to over 100 likes. It would really help me out. But yeah, similar to the top 10 that we looked at the other day, um, it's not even like Charizard is super bait against a lot of this top 10. Um, I mean, it still technically does work as bait. It draws in the Primarinas, it draws in the Dracozolts, and it, a lot of these Pokemon have things they want to do against Charizard. Like I said, Talonflame wants to lead versus Zard, Primarina wants to go versus Zard, Lapras, Dracozolt, they both want to go versus Zard. So it's very, I guess it's more specifically targeting those Pokemon to come and really punishing the people that still want to bring the Clefairies, the uh, Ferrothorns, things like that. So they will be bringing checks to Zard. I will also say that it's like a lot of the Pokemon in the top 20 and top 30. Um, well, well, I, well, that's something different. <laughs> right here. You can see like Dracovish is super good versus Zard. I think Braviary is good versus Zard. Gengar can be good against Zard. Rotom is great versus Zard. A lot of the Pokemon in the top 30 are good versus Zard. So you can still expect a lot of people to bring their things to check Charizard. Uh, so Charizard's still a great Pokemon to build around. And remember, we're going to show the whole team of six, and then we're going to, like, work on using movesets, abilities, calcs, and things like that. So Charizard's the first Pokemon we're going to be building around. Um, the second Pokemon we're going to be building around, like I said, we're going to be trying our best. We're actually going to be using five of the same six Pokemon we used the other day. So we're going to be trying our best to use five of the same six, but we're going to mix it up a lot. And yes, we're using Ninetales. But we're not using Alola Ninetales. We're using Kanto Ninetales. Remember, Kanto Ninetales gets that really good ability Drought, which can set the sun, which is really good for Zard. I have a really cool team that I want to show you guys for today that uses the sun Ninetales. It's my first time really using sun Ninetales in Sword and Shield, so I'm very excited to use that. Obviously, I would use Torkoal, but Torkoal is limited. Sorry, Torkoal is restricted right now because we're using Season 6 rules. But uh, Torkoal is a really good Pokemon. Ninetales is even a little bit better. So I'm super happy to use Ninetales. And... You know, just like the other team used Oloa Ninetales, Rego Ninetales is still super good, and uh, Sun is going to be very good on this team. So after that, we have the Virizion. I still think Virizion is really good at dealing with Urshifus. Remember, we're still looking at how all these Pokemon 
Oh, did I like minimize that window? We're still looking at how all these Pokemon deal. Where is that? There we go. I'm sorry, so sorry if that was a disabled. We're still looking at how all these Pokemon actually deal with the top 10. I'd say Ninetales is pretty good versus a lot of those. Again, Ninetales still has that base 100 speed, which means that outspeeds Urshifu's, outspeeds Arcanine, outspeeds Dracosol, things like that. Um, so they're going to have to go for speed control if they want to deal with the Ninetales. The Virizion, Virizion's actually super cool here versus this top 10 because they, you know they'll be bringing their Talonflame to deal with it because Virizion's so weak to Talonflame. Um, Virizion's great versus Primarina, great versus Urshifu, can't get redirected by or sleep by Amoongus. I think it's usable versus Dust Cops depending how you play it. Uh, it outspeeds the Arcanine. We do get intimidated, but there are ways that we can play around that. Uh, it's good enough versus Ferrothorn, great versus Clefairy, I would say. Um, first Drake Zolt, we can definitely deal with it the way that we're going to deal with it, and it's great versus Labyrinth. I think Virizion's really, really nice. I do think in the current team that we're going to be making, Terrakion would be better, but again, we're trying to use the same six that we used the other day, so, you know, just bear with me as we try and make Virizion work, because it's not that bad. Uh, up next is the Gastrodon. So, Gastrodon here. And then we need two more Pokemon. The last one that we used was Lycanroc. And we're going to use Lycanroc again. And so the last Pokemon that we actually used here was Alolan Sandslash the other day. Remember, we had the Alolan Ninetales, and we wanted to use the Alolan Sandslash to go with that. We're actually mixing it up and using a different Pokemon for the Sun. And I actually think it's a Chlorophyll Mana. And a lot of people are thinking like Liligant, Maractus. Those are probably really good options. We're actually mixing up a lot and using Shiftree. Um, I think Shiftree is actually a really, really underrated Pokemon right now. Shiftree is so good right now. Chlorophyll, uh, this Pokemon speed is doubled in the Sun. And it just, it actually has a really good stat line, and it gets really good moves that you wouldn't really think about. Uh, so, yes, we are mixing up just a little bit. We're using Shiftree instead of Sand Slash. But, uh, you know, if you actually think about Shiftree and Sand Slash, they actually are still kind of similar Pokemon. They still have that really big fighting weakness. They still have that really big fire weakness. It's just that in doubles, you really want those fake out users and Pokemon that can provide better speed control and better things for the team. I think one thing that Shiftree adds to the team that a lot of people aren't going to see coming is Beat Up. Remember, we have Beat Up. Starting to see where the team's going. You know what else gets beat up? So you're starting to see where the team's going to be headed uh, as we start to build the team. So these are our six. Charizard, Ninetales, Virizion, Gastrodon, Lycanroc, Shiftree. And again, I haven't really decided what items I want to run. I haven't decided that much about anything. I just decided that, like, man, it'd be really cool if I could make the same video using the same six. Just to show people that uh, the two formats aren't really that different. And it's, it's a lot more in how you build your EVs. It's a lot more in how you use your items and have your correct board positioning. But people always say that like, oh, that's a good singles team. That's a good doubles team. It's like, no, you can make teams that do pretty much the same. You can use the same Pokemon. You use them in completely different ways for different formats. So how are we gonna do this? Let's talk about some items first. Um, normally you'd like to use a Life Orb Zard. I don't know if I will. I don't know if I want to use a Lumberry there. I think we're still going to use a similar Gastron set. I still think I want to use like Sash here. See, one thing I'm kind of thinking of here, because this is where you guys are going to start to team build with me. Remember what the Pokemon in the number one slot is? It's Talonflame. And so, yes, I can get a Cell Rock here. A Cell Rock is a priority move. It's a rock move. It's super good, right? Um, yo, someone just subbed on the Twitch channel. Yo, that's actually amazing. Yo, TY. I'm going to say TY to that guy. I'm going to say TY to someone subscribing when I'm not, I'm not even live right now. I'm recording a video and I forgot to disable that, but I appreciate that guy. Professor, Professor, if Piff, Professor Piffy, <laughs> subscribe with Twitch Prime when I'm not even online. That's awesome. Uh, you guys, you guys should sub here too. It's free to sub on YouTube. But uh, yeah, so uh, Cell Rock goes versus Talonflame, but again, Talonflame has a higher base speed than Lycanroc. Lycanroc is packing a much lower base speed. I think it's like 112. So... Let me just get rid of this for like one sec so you guys can see the numbers. There we go. So like Lycanroc's packing a much lower base speed. And I think that I actually really do think that like a Scarf Lycanroc could be super cool. I really think the Scarf Lycanroc can be cool with Tough Claws. That way we can outspeed Talonflames. That would be so cool if I just lead Lycanroc and they lead Talonflame and I just a Cell Rock. Because a lot of people would like, cool, I'll let you a Cell Rock me, bro. It's totally fine. And then they'll just Tailwind. And I'm like, nah, fam, a Cell Rock destruction. It also gives us the ability to go, like, Adamant Lycanroc. So we're going to be able to go, like, 252 squad um, with, like, Adamant Lycanroc. And I think that's really cool. I could also mix it up and run, like, a Ancient Power Zard. And go for, like, Sandstorms there and use the other Lycanroc form that also gets a Cell Rock that has Sand Rush. I think that could be really cool in this team. I think Gastron benefit from the Sand Rush would be really cool. But let's see. So let's, let's just look at this Lycanroc first. Let's see how many points we actually need to outspeed a Talent Flame. So what I usually do when I want to look up how many points and run a little bit of uh, EV training, stuff like that. Select your format. You pretty much go into making a whole new team. 
and just compare the Pokemon. So let's compare Talonflame. Talonflame, make sure it's set to 50. And I want to see how much speed a Scarf Lycanroc really needs to outspeed it. So Talonflame plus Lycanroc. Perfect. So at a 1.5, that means right now I'm getting 65 plus, so I'd be a, a 195. Wow. So that means the only thing... So that when you add a Choice Scarf, you're getting a plus 1 speed. So that means that I'm taking half of this number, which is 130, which would be 65, and then adding it to it, so it goes to 195. It's funny that a, a 110 base speed mon with just a with no investment and a scarf uh, speed ties that talent flame. So actually, all we really need to do is there we go, we did it, and we're actually actually outspeeding Pokemon that's uh, speed creep talent flame by 1.2 by just putting four. So that means we're able to go four there, super easy EV spread with that choice scarf, and we even are afforded the luxury of going adamant. This thing has a pretty decent base HP stat too, so that's really really cool. So that's super cool. We were able to scout that out. Let's put this over here. So 252 plus 252. And you usually don't want to go like 252 squads, but I think this is actually just a fine set for this. So we, I know we want to sell walk. rock. Sell walk. Um, I know we want rock slide. And then like, what do we really want in the back? I think player up is still really good. I think player up is super good for checking those Urshifus. Um, and I'm thinking, let's look at the top 10. What else is really good for the top 10? A fire attack might be pretty decent. It might be. I, we get Iron Head too, but like Iron Head's only really good versus the Clefairy. Psychic Fangs would be nice. Because Psychic Fangs is also good versus Urshifu, and it can break screens. I think that's actually pretty dope. Psychic Fangs is good. I could cut the player off for the Psychic Fangs, actually, and then I'd be afforded the luxury of another move. Close Combat? I'll do that. That that's probably good. Yeah. So we're gonna go psychic fangs here. Psychic fangs and just run close combat here. I think. Unless you guys have better ideas. If you guys have better ideas, there is fire fang. I just don't think that's really good enough. I think close combat's good. More often than not, we're gonna be using rock slide to go for those flinches. But like this is actually pretty good. It's a lot stronger versus Urshifu, so you can actually get some KOs. Let's actually run some damage calcs. So we got lichen rock here. Lichen rock, dusk form, and make sure this is adamant with two fifty two. And our ability is Tough Claws. So Tough Claws is going to get the boost here. So close combat. And let's just compare it to Urshifu Dark. Because that's the one that we're trying to beat. Make sure these get set to level 50. And you can see close combat is just enough to Oko and Urshifu Dark. Um, versus like player off would also, but like the fact is we don't really need the player if we really wanted that psychic fangs because psychic fangs does the same amount of damage to the Urshifu um, water. So if there's Urshifu water, we psychic fangs it. If it's Urshifu dark, we close combat it in close combat. And then we just give us a little bit more value than having to run player for both. And like player off doesn't, player off is not strong enough to KO Urshifu dark, I think. Psychic fangs. Because psychic fangs is. Hmm. We'll see. I want to see how much damage Psychic Fangs does to Urshifu Water. I don't think it does KO. Rapid Strike. Yeah, it doesn't KO. So if they've used the Close Combat or taken Chip Damage, maybe like a Wildfire Tick, it'll still KO. But like, Player will be doing like very similar numbers. You see what I mean? So it's like, I still think that that's still a good enough range to like, I want Psychic Fangs in case Lapras. Like, you do want ways to break screens because screens are pretty important. So I think I, having those numbers is actually really important. Cool. So Lycanroc's done. We got a Choice Scarf Lycanroc. I think that's super cool. Um, let's look at this Gastron set. I do think we're going to run actually like the exact same Gastron set. So we're going to actually do. Just go over here. Import, export. If you guys want to see this set, remember to check out the link to the team building video from yesterday. And I'll talk about the set, obviously. So it's a Storm Drain set. Storm Drain makes it so we don't have that big water weakness that we already have. And uh, again, we're actually putting a little bit of points in speed on this Gastrodon. I think it's actually kind of nice because it lets us, first of all, outspeed other Gastrons, which are kind of popular. But it lets us outspeed base 40s who are made for Trick Room. And we don't really want them getting Trick Room up. But like, I don't have to respect your Hyperior with this. And I actually think that I... It might be a better idea to take go like zero speed with speed reduction nature so I can always underspeed their Hyperior. But I'd rather just go first and make it so I don't have to respect them from the start. 
So like if they lead Dust Cops, Rhyperior, I can leave a Charizard, make sure a Charizard second deal with the Rhyperior 1v1, and then just, uh, or sorry, deal with the Dust Cops 1v1, and then I can go like uh, Gastronaut to help deal with the Rhyperior, and it's pretty nice. So I actually think this is a pretty decent set. Um, let's look at Virizion. So Virizion, I don't know exactly what item I'm going to be using, but this is our big Justified Mon. We're going to be having two beat-up Mons to help uh, make this Pokemon succeed. I know we want to go close combat. I know it's probably not the best move. We should probably be going with, like, a Vested Set and, like, Secret Sword or something like that, but I think close combat's fine. Leaf Blade's also really good. Uh, if, if Real Boom was still in the format, we would definitely be going with, like, Grassy Glide, but Leaf Blade's still really, really solid. Um, after that, like, I do like Taunt and Bounce. I, I like... It still gets Taunt, right? Yeah, like, Taunt is so underrated. If we're comparing it to the top 10, like, being able to taunt a Dust Cops, being able to taunt um, all those Pokemon really just are super, super nice. But I'm thinking about it. I think the Bounce is a little bit... I think we do need the Bounce, right? We do need Bounce. And then we have one more move slot left. Like, I could put Taunt there. Um, I could put Megahorn there. Megahorn would not really help out a ton. Quick Attack is okay. I'm really thinking about using Sacred Sword post combat, just because I don't want to go down. Stone Edge, we'll just go Stone Edge in this last slot, because I think Stone Edge is actually really popular for helping us deal with Zard. And Tomplin. Really, really good, once we break their things like that. So, we're going to mess with our Eevees in a moment. We're going to move on to a couple others. I haven't used our Sash yet. I think I'm going to use a Sash Ninetales. It's either Sash or Specs Ninetales. Actually, I'm going to show you guys my Shift Tree idea. Um, we're going to use King's Rock Shift Tree. I think this is a cool set. So, King's Rock, for those guys who don't know, hold their attacks with... Uh, without a chance to flinch, gain a 10% chance to flinch. So, um, and it says, like, holder attacks without a percent chance defense. Like, let's say I was using something like Air Slash, which has a 30% chance to flinch. It wouldn't give 10% to Air Slash. It wouldn't make Air Slash a 40%. It would just make two separate accounts of flinching. So, it have, Air Slash would still have its 30% chance, and then King Drak would add a secondary 10% chance after they've already rolled for the percent chance to flinch on the uh, Air Slash. So, that's how that does work. Uh, Showdown is a little bit misleading here, because it pretty much says, like, it would make you believe that it says, like, they don't get a chance to punch at all based off what this says, but it's incorrect. So it's actually really cool because we can go for, like, this. So I really like this set because we have Fake Out, right? Fake Out says flinch. Uh, fling. I can fling my King's Rock. That will guarantee a flinch. And what's really cool about it is you can hit Dust Clops and Ghost Types with that. It's super nice. I can also use Beat Up. And Beat Up will have four chances of 10% chance to flinch. So that's super, super cool. I, I love seeing like beat up teams like that that use uh, King's Rock correctly. And if I'm be self beating up my own Virizion, I remember I have the Justified proc. Remember Justified will give my Pokemon a uh, attack boost every single time it gets hit by a dark attack. So we're going to go for like Sun, uh, get the Shift Tree in there. Shift Tree will then outspeed the Virizion. We'll be able to go for beat ups into it. Virizion will probably be maxed at that point, so I don't have to worry about flinching it. And then the last move, I'm curious as to what I really do want it to be. Believe it or not, I'm actually looking at uh heat wave i'm actually just looking at heat wave heat wave's pretty good here decent versus amoongus decent versus that ferrothorn i just don't think i need like a heat wave versus this team so what's one techie move that i could use uh i can be physical or special with this guy too i can even put like freaking explosion on this guy this thing gets so many cool moves it gets lash out it gets hurricane it gets leech seed let's see though what do we actually want whirlwind's okay actually as well too i think i might actually go whirlwind as weird as that sounds um, the reason you want Whirlwind there is because you can Whirlwind out Trick Room Setters. And there's just so many cool things. Icy Wind is really nice as well. Snarl. Ooh, that's so sick. I'm thinking I might go with the Snarl. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Snarl. Snarl has the double percent chance to flinch too from the King's Rock. It's actually really nice. We'll mess with our Eevees in a moment. But yeah, let's talk about the Zard. I think we're going to go standard Life Orb Zard. I think that there probably are better ways to do it, but I, I just keep being drawn to the Life Orb Zard. So Life Orb, Solar Power. Um, you do want a very aggressive set. I actually think because we're going to be going this aggressive, we're actually going to be going with like Blast Burn um, just because you want the big dot. Not Blaze Kick Lamau. So Blast Burn, Heat Wave. Heat Wave is just for being good outside of... Uh, you know, being in max mode, Heat Wave hits at AoE. Sometimes you need that stuff. Um, we are going to go Solar Beam. And we are going to go for... Ah, oh man. I, I think I'm going to go Hurricane, even though we're going to be in the sun. Just because I need the damage from a much higher base uh, flying type attack. And the standard Zard Sped, Spread, you just want to be with this exact one. Because Zards are still pretty popular. Base 100 is a lot more popular. If you remember the team we built the other day, we only really needed to outspeed Urshifu. So we cut a little bit. But since um, we're expecting to see like a lot of other Zards, we still want to go 252 because base 100 is a lot more prominent in doubles. 
So this is a pretty good spread. And the reason we need the solar beam there is so we can uh, set the terrains for... Oh, wait, we can't go solar beam. We have to go beat up. That's fine. Yeah, we have to go beat up for this set. Yeah, so that means our, our Zard has to be able to outspeed our Verizians, which is okay. That's another reason why you want to go Timid. So 167. Uh, so that means this thing has to be 166. Which will be like... I want to see if 252 can even do it. Nope. So we don't need to be like that slow. So we can go like... 220 with nature to make it so our zard can still outspeed i think it might be like 180 yep make sure 176 isn't the right number cool so 180 and then we go 252 and we go 76 over here and the reason we're doing it the 166 you see on the verizian here it's going to underspeed our zard so if i lead charizard and i lead verizian i can just dynamax my verizian immediately and charizard can just go for a beat up into that slot so beat up beat up charizard is definitely usable it's one of my favorite sets and it does really work there um, Shiftry, on the other hand, how do I actually want to be able to deal with this? Um, I want to be able to, like, deny that Talonflame forever. Like, forever. So we always need to be able to outspeed Talonflame. I think I'm going to try and outspeed base 130s. Is there a Scarf? What's Scarf Urshifu speed get to? So we're going to go Urshifu here. We're going to make him Jolly. We're still in the calculator right now. So we're going to go Jolly Urshifu. We're going to put it at plus one because that's what a Scarf will be. So we need to outspeed 244 in... Um, we need to outspeed base 244 inside of chlorophyll so 240 we need to get to 245 which means 123 so we need to 123 that's probably like 100 no is it really gonna be that much all right it's gonna be a lot 123 bam easy all right and uh what do i actually really want to boost then because like i could probably boost this because like i don't have any other stat that i really rather boost remember you always want to play your nature and your stats that you have the most you know, you can't use their, you can't have an HP boosting nature, and I don't really want to deal damage with this thing. I want to be able to be a support mod. So I actually think we're going to go with a plus, I think we can go like 100 with like a plus nature. And we probably, I'm curious as the, I actually think I want, I'm curious, I think I'm going to go like this. 124, we want 123. Let me make sure. All right, 123. So it's going to be 126, which is faster. Sorry, 126. That'll be way faster. Wait, am I just like looking at this all correct incorrectly? 244 divided by 2. 22, 122. Yeah, 123. Cool, cool. We're good. We're good. Yeah, perfect. So uh, I'm able to put that there. And then I can just go like 252 here. And then I have an extra 164 I can put literally anywhere. These both are 60, so it doesn't really matter where I put it. Um, I would say, though, we're going to leave the top 10 again. Physical Talonflame, Physical Urshifu, Arcanine's Mixed, Physical Drake. So it looks like more often than not, like, we're going to be finding specials. Let's, let's, let's take a look at the rest of it. Special, special. I think we're going to uh, go special, the investment, for the most part. Yeah. We're going to take a look at some special, the investment. Just because I think there's a lot more special, the running around. So we're actually going to go, like, um, one... 28 just because i think it's sorry oh sorry 124 yeah and then we're just gonna put the last like is it 36 i'm gonna put the last four here cool and remember you want to use all your points remember the way evs go they go like copies of 4 12 20 28 uh 36 i think it's a pretty decent spread um and i know we're using snarl here so it sucks we have to use special attack nature but i actually think it can do good damage with beat up it's a 100 base attack so it doesn't really matter how much damage our beat up does to our Rizian, but like beat up will good, do good damage like a Dust Clops or like another Pokemon on their side of the board. It's also make our fake out hit a little bit harder, which is pretty good because we're gonna have to fake out things. So I think this Shift Tree set's gonna be really fun to use. So we've done one, two, three. We haven't picked our item yet, and normally people would go with the Lumberry here. You would normally want to go with a Lumberry in this situation, but I think I'm gonna be greedy and play it with an Assault Vest. And if we're gonna play it with Assault Vest, I'm gonna put Secret Sword on here. I also think, uh, sorry, uh, it gets some sort of sword move, right? Sword move. I don't want to put Brick Break, that'd be dope. Yeah, Sacred Sword, sorry. Ignores the target stat changes. So it'll ignore people that are using, like, uh, big Iron Defense Talon Flames and Iron Defense Corviknights too, so that's pretty nice. Uh, and the reason why we're doing it is because, like, if you're in a max mode situation, uh, remember, max Knuckle is not, like, boosted the same way, like, max overgrowth or max hailstorm things like that is it only goes up to 90 or 95 so you might as well just go with the sacred sword so you don't lower your stats even more so that's gonna be like that there zard zard's pretty much done 
make sure that's a zero actually so we don't hurt ourselves so this nine tail set i'm actually thinking i don't know exactly which way i want to run it i've thought about running like an eject pack i've thought about running actually eject packs probably perfect let's run the eject pack here eject pack and so the way this is going to work is the holder stats are lowered lowered anyway through the use of intimidate through the use of you know us lowering them ourselves with the use of overheat i think overheat's really nice uh, and so it's going to give us free switch. So if I lead nine tails and shift tree, I can go fake out overheat, get a free switch into my Brazilian, but I've already set the sun, and then I can just go for beat up there. It's really, really nice. And then let's think about the the other moves we want to run. I think that you still do want, like, I think that pre marina is big enough to warrant using solar beam. So is Lapras, but we'll see. I kind of want to go for like an encore set. I think that encore could actually be usable. I think memento is also really, really nice. Would Memento be really good? Because I, I would go like Memento into like a Verzian set, but then I'd already have one less Pokemon to give me a beat up on. I think Will Wisp is really cool. We'll go for Will Wisp here. I think Will Wisp is value. Being able to Will Wisp at Urshifu could be really, really nice. And it would super new to that thing. Yeah, we'll go for Will Wisp. I think Will Wisp is cool. We're just looking at a really weird way to run Ninetales here. So uh, I kind of want to run like a quick attack Ninetales with like a trick user. That'd be so sick. Don't really need Weather Ball. Don't really need Roar. I mean, I could run screens on this thing too if I really wanted to. Does it get Light Screen? No, it doesn't. It just gets Reflect. Yeah, we're just going to keep looking. I think there are a bunch of cool things Ninetales can do though. It gets Hypnosis if I want to be that guy. It does get Sunny Day if I need to rehard cast Sun. I mean, I think Encore is so sick on this thing. But it's just hard to say exactly how we'd be able to get that done, you know? Like, what would I be encoring from this top 10? Just follow me and things like that? I don't think that's value. A lot of people would just go Heat Wave and Solar Beam here, right? but I don't want to be like most people. Does it get Yawn? No, that'd be dope. That'd be super good, actually. Yeah, we're still thinking about it. I'm, cur I'm curious what you guys would do. I think the Memento is actually not bad. Because, like, Ninetales just doesn't really bring a lot to the table. But I guess I don't really need a Memento because I just have Overheat. Yeah. I really like the Memento. I just don't... I don't know, it's hard to say. I think Scorching Sands can be really good versus Drake Azolt. Substitute could be alright. I don't really want to go with Attract, but I do know that like Attract is good. Fake Tears. That's actually really, really sick. And if we make ourselves faster than Zard, so if we actually change our Zard set to be that 244... We'd have to change our Brazilian set. 166, this we'd have to go to 165, which means it'd be 162. No, 172, sorry. Yep, 165, and then we have an extra 8, so we're still those in there. 84. And so if we make our Ninetales outspeed our Zard, we can go for fake tiers into those sets. And I can lower their specialty by 2. That's actually super, super cool. And then I'm looking at the last set, or the last item choice. I do think that, like, Encore is really good on Ninetales. But, like, I'm just thinking, like, what I would be Encoring. There's not that, like, much that you can Encore in the top 10. Dark Pulse isn't that value. Like, another reason why you don't want to go with uh, just random moves. If, unless they're four times super effective things, like Fire Attacks me four times super effective against Talonflame. Ice Attacks me four times super effective against, like, things that are weak against four times super effective Ice Attacks. Unless the move itself has, like, over, like, an 80. Sorry, not over an 80. Over, like, 100. So unless I'm packing solar beams or like fire blast or thunders or hydro pumps, you don't really don't just want to put moves just because they're super effective. Like everyone's like, dark pulse, extra sensory. It's like, no, even like a super effective one of those is weaker than an overheat. So the way this would work is like if an extra sensory was super effective, you go to 160. Overheat is already a 130 stab, which means it gets a 1.5 boost. Uh, so it's going to get 65 put on there and go to 195. So an overheat is just stronger than a super effective uh, extra sensory, which is sad. Uh, but that is how Pokemon works. Hex could be kind of cool because we have Will Wisp, but again, it's it's not that not that value. Yeah, I'm still thinking there has to be like one really cool move that we can use to like change things up here that gives us Nine Tails a lot more value. We can go Howl, but I don't think that's value. <laughs> Mystical Fire might actually be good, just because um. We can use the lower special attacks on like Lapras and things. Safeguard. I'm just going to go Safeguard. 
I think it's actually a pretty dope play. Ah, uh, safeguard's only okay. We don't really need to... I don't need to be afraid of your Amoongus. I'll just hit your Amoongus, you know? Safeguard would be pretty dope, though. I guess I could just put Sunny Day on it again to Reese pop Sun if I had to. I don't know about that one. I'm not going to put Inferno. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but this is an important turn. I can also just disable things. Um, If I, you know, like, bring in the Ninetales mid-game, I can just go for, like, just a hard disable against something I know is already choiced or, like, already really wants to use that move. So you really only want to use Disable with Protect, though, so I guess that's not that value. I also, I mean, we just want some Calcs. It'll probably just be Solar Beam. So let's just go Ninetales. So Ninetales has a Solar Beam. How much does it actually do to Primarina? So let's just look at some numbers. Is if it does over half, it does it does over half to like regular prims? But like, what about like a vested prim? See, like that's that's not no one likes that. Uh, how much does it do right here? There has to just be a cool move. I don't want to run protect, you know. Just don't want to run that protect. Yes, yeah, solar beam. That's all on right here now. Doesn't even KO like a bulky Rhyperior, you know, like that's, that's sad. You know, like a regular Rhyperior would be like, it'd KO a regular one, but if they just Dynamax, they'd laugh at you. You know what I mean? So it's like, oof. I guess I could use Ninetales to like set the terrain for Verizian. That'd be kind of cool. I could go Nasty Plot too. I don't really want to go Nasty Plot. I could go Reflect. I already have Lulu, so I don't think I need to double. Store power is useless. Sub is like okay, but like I don't see the value in it. Uh, weather ball would be funny. I think I, I might just go attract. I like attract. Now there has to be a better move to use here. There really does have to be a better move to use. I think fake tears was a step in the right direction. I'm gonna put hypnosis. I know we're gonna stack both those, but I think that's okay. And this is not a recommended EV spread. That's incorrect. All right, so we're going to go 2v2, 2v2, pretty easy squad going up right here. Put the last four in a specialty. All right, so again, 167, it's going to let us outspeed our Zard. So we're able to go for like fake tiers plays with our Zard. Um, we have the set the sun set up a shift tree. We can go fake out um, into their talent flame. We can go for like an eject pack. We can help us bring in our Lycan rock. We can help us bring in our Verizium. We then go for beat up plays with uh, the shift tree uh, or the Charizard into the Verizium. We actually have uh, points left over here. So we should use them. I don't think you want to put them in HP. I think you're much better off using them in like defense. Just because, uh, you know, there's a lot of physical mons right now. I think it's actually going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be a super cool team. Make sure to click that validate button. And my team is valid. VGC, you always want to do that. The last thing you really want to do is bring everything into the Maryland team builder, which is going to be right here. You've already seen me pull this up before. But again, you we might show a lot of weaknesses and anytime you get that red mark weakness that dark red one you can see we have a lot of weaknesses to uh water you know you really want to do your best to mitigate that we have charizard's weak against water ninetales weak against water like rocks weak against water but we also have Verizian and shift tree that resists water and a gastron with storm drain so uh we can fully mitigate that remember what i always want to say is your total resistances have to be equal to or more than your weaknesses you can see we have a couple weaknesses sorry to ice fighting um what is it? Ice fighting, and it looks like that's it that we have more weaknesses to. But, like, what are those Pokemon? It's Shift Tree, right? That's adding those weaknesses. Shift Tree's not supposed to stick around for a really long time. So, it adding an additional ice and fighting weaknesses, I don't really think matter that much. And, uh, yeah, be sure to just utilize a lot of the tools that, you know, we, we talked about looking up usage stats. We talked about using the Maryland thing. We talked about building cores a lot the other day. If you want me to go all the way back and talk about, uh, you know, building the core for like this team the uh the original way i built it was like charizard uh they have to respect it you can switch to gastrodon if you're afraid of uh you know water or electric attacks if they're gonna go after your gastrodon with a grass attack cool you have like a million things to switch to to block a gas attack you can go back to your charizard to your nine tails to your Verizian, to your shift tree i think this team plays a little bit more aggressive so you know that's just one way to look at it you know what? i'm actually gonna play a game i think i'm actually just gonna play a game let's uh Let's change our name here. Let's go. LOL. That's a plus one. There we go. I'm not even going to spell my name right, probably. And let's play a game. Let's just show you guys what this does look like. Let's get some of these things off the board, too. 
So I think in the last one, I didn't really play any games. So I think being able to like play games might be really nice. So you can see, bam, right here. We're going to play a game with it. I'm going to show you guys how this team actually works. And hopefully we can be able to, you know, pull something together. I think this team has a lot of really cool things to talk about on paper. I think it's really, really cool. Oh, that's a cool team right there. I think it's really cool that like Ninetales and Verizian have exact opposite weaknesses. So Ninetales is weak against like rock, ground, water, all three things that Verizian are weak against. So if I were to ever lead with like, if I were to ever lead like Shift Tree Ninetales, uh, I can just actually hard switch out my Ninetales for the Verizian if I actually wanted to. And then just go for like really big plays the next turn. I think I'm, I think I am on a lead like that because it's still just a really good lead here. And then looking at this, I think Lycanroc is okay here. We have close combat for Exedril. We have uh, a Cell Rock and Rock Slides for Noivern. We have good stuff for Melodic. We have, yeah, I'm thinking Lycanroc is actually a really good last Mon here. If we're going to be planning on Dynamaxing or Verizian. So let's go with it. We got the Sun and Done. Alright, so let's see. Do you have Frisk? No Frisk. Okay. <sighs> hmm. Alright, so let's actually think about how I do want to play this. I think you want to actually go after the Butterfree. I think just nuking the Butterfree is just a really good play. So we're going to go overheat into the Butterfree and a fake out into the Butterfree. I could even go for a Snarl this turn if I really wanted to. I think that's actually even just a better play than a fake out. Just because it'd be able to lower stats. Cool, this is actually really smart. You don't want to waste your fake out. You might as well just go for the Snarl, right? So it's going to be able to do good damage or lower the special attacks. We outspeed Butterfree with Ninetales. Oh, and thanks to that Snarl, we're able to live the Draco. And then the overheat comes in hot, picks up the kill on Butterfree, switches out my own Ninetales thanks to my eject button. And look at us now. Look at us, baby. Look at us now. I probably should have actually... Oh, he has the four special attacks. Yeah, switched from the Draco. So we're going to be able to... He's probably going to be switching next turn. Did those cans for me to my shift free? Look at that moveset, yo. Where are you looking, chief? Um, who do we actually want to hit? I think we just want to hit the Ditto. Because, like, I don't care about that thing. If we get an airstream here, that's dope. And then the beat up. So he's going to be a faster shift tree. He can fake us out here, but we'll still get an airstream. And I don't think, like, a hurricane from that guy would do it. Yeah. So let's see. Fake out smart. Draco and that guy. Oh, that ain't going to be it, chief. That is not going to be it, Chief. Going for the big bounce. Give me that airstream. So now I'll be able to outspeed your Norvin. Now you can't switch anymore. And you can see how cool this team is. And remember, this team's whole idea was, um, you know, based off of what was like a singles team. I'm just going to overgrowth this guy. I could fling it, actually. Yeah, let's do that. So let's actually go for like a rock fall into the Noivern. I think that's probably going to be enough to KO. And it would put a little bit of a dot up versus the... No, we can't go for Rock Ball. We want to go for... I guess we just go for Airstream again. Because we want to be able to go for it correctly. And then just we fling here. Yep, flinging that to get the uh, the flinch for one turn. Give me one more big damage against that guy. It doesn't really matter what he actually wants to do against us. He won't be able to get the KO. Alright, next turn I'm going to nuke this Dust Clops. I wonder if I can actually KO a Dust Clops. Like, we're going to be overgrowthing. 130. And we're going to go for a beat up. So we're going to go plus 4. I wonder if that's actually enough damage to Oko a Clops. He looks really, really bulky. But yeah, this team uses the same pretty much Pokemon other than the Shift Tree that we used in the singles video the other day. And I, I think it's really, really cool. So we're going to hit ourselves. Look at all the boosts we're getting. And let's see if we actually have the KO. Even, oh my gosh, Rizian's so busted. Like I said, Trakian would be just a little bit better. Yo, Shift Tree hanging on by a thread right now. And you know what? You know what? I'm going to get the win with my Shift Tree. I'm going to get the win with my Shift Tree. Yeah, this is stronger. The big beat up. I think this team's so cool. GG. This guy says GG. I said thanks for the game. And, and Shift Tree. Shift Tree busted. So hopefully you guys like the team. I think it's a super cool team. Super fun to play. I'll we'll probably be streaming a little bit with this a little bit later. But again, it's so similar to the team that I made the other day. And it uses the same tools. I looked at usage stats and I was like, hmm, what Pokemon do I think is busted right now? Charizard's pretty busted. Let's build a team around Charizard. The team looks almost exactly the same. They both have Charizard, they both have Ninetales, they both have Verizzi and Gastrodon, Lycanroc, but it uses all of them in completely different ways other than the Gastrodon, and adds just one Pokemon different. And I would say the Pokemon that we're switching out just do similar things. They're both Pokemon that, uh, you know, have an ability that doubles their speed in their weather, and they both have fire weaknesses, they both have fighting weaknesses, and other than that, they just play... You know, they just do, they do different things, but they have a very similar play style. So hopefully you guys like this. If you guys want to see more little videos of me talking about how to build teams, you know, let me know in the comments below, as well as the answer to the question of the day. And remember that question is, are you more of a fan or singles of, or doubles? And I want you to give me concrete reasons why you like singles. Do you like singles? Cause that's what you always played. Do you like doubles? Because you think it's more competitive. And if you do think doubles is more competitive, I want to know why, because I actually think that doubles, it's not that it's really more competitive. I would say that it just suits different players' skill sets. It's just different skill sets. 
to say one's more competitive than the other is looking at it, I think, very, very small-mindedly because, you know, that's like saying, like, obviously chess is more competitive than checkers, but that's because all the pieces in chess can do more moves. You know, that, that doesn't really... Saying, I, I've heard that I've heard that analogy before. People say like, you know, singles is like checkers. It's like, no, it's not. It's not like checkers. Like it, I, this team, for example, shows, you know, that like the same Pokemon really that work in one format work just as good in another. So hopefully you guys like the video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.